Hi people, Martin here. Um, just a quick video. Uh, we had a vinyl uh, community, if you want to call it that, meetup uh, last Sunday. Uh, and I've got a few other finds as well. Actually, one really, a couple of really good things that I found in a in a charity Oxfam shop. Um, obligatory swig of drink. I wonder what percentage of people in record videos have to have a drink with them. Quite, quite bewildering, really. Anyway, so Sunday morning, I went to Reading. It's about somewhere between hour, hour and a half drive for me. It's it's west of London for those of you um, uh, um, don't know where it is. It's in a big leisure centre. The car parking is terrible. Um, the toilets are terrible. Um, but apart from that, there's lots of great vendors. It's definitely a buyer's um, fair, I would say. Yeah. Um, lots of bargains. I, found, I, I just go around all the cheapy sort of people more. Um I there was one really um you know like when you see someone and they're selling some stuff and it's it's obviously somebody's passed away or divorce or something well in this case it was definitely somebody had died um yeah that was very sad and that sort of slightly distracted me um from buying stuff I think I was being quite sympathetic to the people um there and sort of trying to talk a bit too much when they, I think they just wanted to get rid of the, the stuff really. Um, when I started looking there, it was five quid ago. And by the time I came back or was deliberating over what to get, it was three quid ago. Looking back, uh, there was a couple of guys there. I think they were maybe like Russians or something. And they pounced on a load of stuff as did another, um, Gazai, Gazai, another guy, maybe Brazilian or something. So by the time all that had um, happened, um come on rambling here aren't i um a lot of the good stuff had gone so this wasn't the first person i came to but in the end i got i only got three and i'm actually quite disappointed it was about that time i bumped into john and rob as well who had already uh turned up so those of you who don't know john is called six inch P six inch pianist and i would recommend his videos as i would rob walker let the music play um, we'll come to them later, shall we? So the three things that I got were from this stall uh, something Cuban called Ensemble Moncada. I know nothing about it apart from I like the picture, and it's sort of got some sort of signed squiggles on the back. Now this is um, that was three quid, so this was three quid as well. So this is a replacement copy or an upgrade copy for me. So parchment. Um, are a Christian acid folk band uh, of which John Pack, the main guy which I think is this dude here passed away now with his big clog shoe there he's from Liverpool and his songwriting is really good um, there's a song here called Denomination Blues which is a cover um an old blues song from America, Green Psalm, Don't Let the Morning morning Come, Corners of My Life, very uh, deep, but also very um, easy to listen to, I suppose you would say. Yeah, yeah. I think this was their third album. They actually had a hit in the UK, believe it or not. Uh, this is Johnny Harris, All To Bring You Morning, with uh, one of his own compositions there, self-titled, and some covers. You've lost that loving feeling. Pavan by Gabriel Fauré, I guess. Norwegian Wood and Imagine there. That's three quid. So all these other finds, I don't know so much about them, but they were just cheap, so I picked them all up. This is slightly battered sleeve, but it was on the President label. Seeds. Uh, is that Alan James Eastwood, I think? Yeah, pretty good condition. Seems to be quite collectible sort of record, really. 
I gave it a listen. I didn't really like it that much, but I sort of bought that because it said in here there was like horns and tabla, mar marimba, congo. I don't know. I'll give it another go, but not that enamoured with it, really. Something here by the Stars of Faith of Black Nativity. Maybe more known in America, I guess. I don't know. But, um, it's on a um, concert hall synchro label this label which you've probably seen looking about these were all a quid or two I, I can't remember now um, far more interesting things you get in those sort of bins than your regular ABBA Beatles you know kind of bins this is Pete Bauman uh, Romance 76 this is debut from uh, uh, Tangerine Dream guy can you see there someone's drawn some sort of bizarre i don't know it looks like his eye patch has gone has moved or something i don't know it's sort of a half man half woman thing going on there i don't even know tangerine dream that well but i thought that would be interesting <laughs> angels and 15 other bbc tv theme um songs including dazzle jim will fix it and yeah, we don't mention that, do we now? Uh, Grandstand, Angels, Rockford Files, without the phone ringing though on it, unfortunately, at the start. Bruce, Life is the Name of a Game, Belay the Birds, A Scaffold, Who Do You Think You Are Kidding, Mr. Hitler? That kind of retro fun from the um, 70s. Uh, a couple of really uh, ugly covers here, no, seriously folks not not good at all <laughs> they're all a quid uh, david leibman and richard Birak, and there they are on the back look look at them goodness me yes, someone with a shinier head than me there and then um manitas de plata and his son manero this is good though this he's got his son singing on this it's really good there he is on the back, looking a bit creepy. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Uh, we've got... Well, I've heard of this because it's on Netflix. Uh, it's Where the Wild Things Are. But I don't know anything about it at all. Apart from it's on Netflix. It's sort of... Is it classical? A fantasy opera in one act. So maybe the series is just uh, based on it. Music by Olivier Knussen. Words by Maurice Sendak. One pound. <laughs> Hot tuna. A bit battered. Uh, I recognise Yorama Kalkonen. So it must have something to do with Jefferson Airplane. Jefferson Starship. I've been looking for a copy of this for ages. Got some good tracks on it. Including, obviously, Crazy Horses. Uh, Michael Quattro. Susie Quattro's brother. This is, I'm guessing, some sort of prog thing going on. It's uh, on United Artists. And uh, Synergy, I've heard of them. This was a quid as well. It's got a poster in it of the cover. It's some sort of synth ambient sort of record. So... We had a good look around. I have to say, Rob Walker knows his current music. But I did not take him up on anything that he pointed out to me, which is a bit it's a bit crap of me, really. Um, there was loads of new vinyl there, like, for a fiver. And he knew a lot of it. I, I just didn't. I don't know why. I just... I think I'd... You get to a record fair, and then you just sort of stop buying. I probably spent about 20... 25 quid altogether. Anyway, I knew the VCLT was coming. Um, and John, John knows a lot of stuff, which is why I would recommend his channel as well. And uh, John gave me something maybe to sample or maybe just to uh, try. So it's, um, it seems to be from a CD, but put onto a record. So it's this. Martin Luther King. Opposing the Vietnam War, so it's presumably like a um, 
sermon. And it's, it has a label. Uh, Paul Winley. Paul Winley Records Sales, P.O. Box, 1214, New York. I mean, I know this isn't the I Have a Dream one, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. I've had stuff sent to me before that I have sampled, actually. So we went to a, a, a pub, a Toby Carvery, and we had a good chat after the record fair for quite a few hours, actually. Quite a few hours and had something to eat and a bit to drink and um, put the world to rights and put the VC to rights without getting um, too too political. Um, and then um, Rob gave me something I asked him about ages ago. I gave it a listen. It's really strange listening to Sergeant Pepper. Um, this is a Flaming Lips um, with lots of people on it, like Miley Cyrus and whatnot. It's really weird hearing it by other people. I can obviously see why he didn't like it. Um, I might get into it, I think, actually. I think I might get into it. It's, um, yeah. I mean, I'm totally bemused and and like um, weird cover versions of things as it is anyway. I mean, yeah, you could say this was because their career was going up swanny. I, I don't know. Or, well, it was actually for charity, wasn't it? So I'm presuming that's why they did it. Um Yeah. Well, you all know this album, and, and here's a, another version of it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rob, anyway, and John. <laughs> oh, this was from um, Rob as well. He ba gave me and John an Alan Parsons project album because neither of us had anything by them. <laughs> this is 80s, isn't it? This is, um, what does that say? 84. And he also gave me this, Lou Reed, the Blue Mask, from 82. Someone talked about this recently, I can't remember who, but it's actually quite um, quite interesting album, actually. Um, not one of his well-known or um, popular ones. A lot of the issues and stuff, this is sort of, I don't know how much before, so it's probably about six years before, um, six, seven years before... Um, um, his New York album. So really, I could sort of see where this is coming from and where it went to, in a way. It's a similar sort of heavy issues, although this is quite, it seems to be quite moral on it, in a way. Um, yeah, some people said it's a bit more like Velvet Underground as well. So that was Reading. We had a good time. Not much else really to say about it, I don't think. Uh, on to uh, the week before, I've got some one pound finds and then a totally amazing um, find here. Um, I will start with. So this is the last album uh, by the. Uh, now is she Peruvian or Chilean? Chilean. Uh, she's Peru. Okay, Uma Sumac. So this is um, with the producer Les Baxter. And also a band. Apparently, she didn't like this album and tried to get it pulled. It's a great album. It's um, it's quite out there in a way, I suppose. Her voice is amazing. Um, yeah, someone in Oxfam put this out for three quid. It's in really nice condition. I mean, you can just tell from the cover. And as soon as I saw the name, I thought, oh, it's made made my month really. Uh, yeah, great. There's a version of um, El Condor Pasa on there. Um, yeah. And the other ones, uh, this had a pound on it and it's a bit, label's a bit done in there. So this is sort of some sort of noise thing, oilseed rape from, uh, is it on amphetamine? Label, not sure what label it's on. Anyway, it's some sort of, it's 1992, it's sort of noise, guitar thing going on. There's the uh, 
promo uh, press pack thing with it. Yeah, made in England. It's English. I, thought, I did think it was American, actually. And going on far too long here. What have we got here? Dr. Fibes, band from Liverpool, 12 inch. Haven't got this on anything at all. I think I've got an album by them. Uh, this is from. Uh, hmm. Look. 91, maybe? I can't see. Anyway, you can look it up yourself. Dr. Five, slightly psychedelic, swirly indie band. And we've got uh, Noel Edmonds' Funny Phone Calls, Volume 1. Yeah, uh, funny. Uh, to complete a um, trio, I've already got Trumpton, um, I've got Chigley. So here is Camberwick Green. Uh, these are stories, they're not songs. So we've got Wendy Miller Goes Fishing and Peter Hazel, the postman, has an adventure. Uh, here's Peter Hazel and Wendy Miller isn't there. I can't remember this guy's name. I think he might have been... He looks like the guy from Trumpton as well, so it might be, I don't know. It's on BBC Records. Stories from um, Camberwick Green, Gordon Murray, BBC TV series. Music composed and played by Freddie Phillips. Sung and narrated by Brian Kant. If you grew up with Brian Kant, you'll know who he is. Now, I've just done a video with James Griffiths. Um, so, um, without giving too much away, um, I mentioned this band as a band that I know nothing about, apart from I saw them once as the uh, backup support band. Uh, this was 99p Nuclear Valdez, so I presume that they are of Spanish origin, um, Hispanic Americans. Um, I remember nothing about them, apart from I didn't like them. So I got it for 99p. Um, yeah, dodgy waistcoat there, look at that. Let's see. Uh, the Shadow of Colditz with some songs and stories from the war, Second World War. Oh, this wasn't very good. I thought this was going to be good, judging by the cover. Catherine Howe, Harry, was a quid. There's a couple, just awful, but there was a couple of weird, mixed in with all the sort of uh, what you'd expect, folky pop songs. There was a couple of sort of weird disco ones in there. I don't know where they came from. And uh, I've no idea what this is, but it's from 2002. The cover grabbed me. I don't know who she is, if she's in the band or if she's someone famous. And it says Can Canyon Empty Rooms. Uh, seems to be four guys in it. It's American. It sounded quite nice, actually. It's just got a white label on it with the words on it of the songs I mean sorry uh, yeah something from middle America maybe not so country but that sort of realm with a bit of rock going on in it so that was Reading that was some fines and um, thanks for watching catch you soon bye